So the Solar Edge um, dashboard or the Solar Edge company allow you to access the raw data via their API. Now the first thing you need to do to get access to that API is to generate your own API key. And you do that by going into your um, monitoring web page uh, as you'd normally log into your dashboard. And then when you come into your dashboard, it kind of looks like this on the front. You just need to click onto the cogwheel onto admin. And then what you'll see is you'll see API access down here. And you need to tick that box to say you've read and understood the API terms and conditions. And then you need to generate a new key and then save that as well. And then you should get access to the API. They've kindly put a link here to the API guide as well. So let's have a look at that. Right, so this is a PDF document and it is 57 pages long. And this contains everything you need to know in order to get some raw sort of data, uh, your data, out of the Solar Edge systems. So at the beginning, it talks really all about what you need to do to generate your API key as well just the same as I've just mentioned. And then it talks about um, security kind of guidelines about regenerating your API. It also talks about um, the language and the time encodings. So there's three main formats you can get out. You can get the data out in JSON format, XML or CSV. And we'll have a look at getting XML and CSV out and what you need to send to it to get those uh, that type of data format coming back. Uh, it's also got lots of detail about the usage limitations. So in here it talks about the query limit per day uh, for a specific uh, account is 300 requests per day. So a fair few. And it also gives you lots of examples, although these examples, if you click on them, they don't actually work, which is a bit of a shame. You thought they'd keep up a sort of a demo version of one of their sites. Um, but it will tell you exactly what you need to send to the API in order to get some data back and what data you will be getting back. So there's lots of different um, things that you can play with to see your data if you want to get more data out of the uh, Solar Edge API. Now the reason I kind of looked at it initially was I was thinking that there was going to be a lot more kind of hidden data that wasn't shown in the dashboard that I could kind of access and maybe use. But it does turn, seem to be that uh, most of the data um, was actually used in the dashboard already. It's just if you really want to access it and do something else with the data, then it is uh, your data and you can get access to it. So let's start off with a basic call. So this is the kind of URL uh, that you need to send in order to get out your um, power. And what I've asked for here is I've asked for the time unit in quarter of an hour segments and I've specified the end time with the year, the month, the date, percent 20 for a space and then the time in 24 hours, minutes and seconds and then the start time is the same and then you'll see I've asked for well, I've had to submit my API key in here. So where I've got the three X's, you need to copy and paste your API key in there to get it to work. And also you'll see at the top here, uh, where you've got site and then a forward slash with the three X's, you need to put your site ID in there as well. And then this should return some XML for you uh, based on the data between those two dates. So once you've copied and pasted that URL into your uh, web browser, you should get this result or something similar. Um, so the time unit at the top quarter of an hour measured by your inverter. And then we've got quarter of an hour uh, pieces of data and how much was coming into the inverter. Obviously, we're getting nulls at the beginning because it was overnight. And then if we scroll down, we should start seeing, you know, six, seven o'clock in the morning. We start seeing some um, kilowatts, some kilowatt hour values coming in there. OK, so that's quite an easy one to do. Now, if we want to change it to get out CSV, so that's XML. If we want to change it to get CSV out and what it will do is it will download a file directly. You'll get no output in the browser. You will just have a CSV file download. We'll do that next. 
So if you want your output in CSV as opposed to XML, all you have to do is add that to the uh, URL. So you would type in format equals CSV. Make sure the CSV is in lowercase. And then you should get a file downloaded automatically once you've copied and pasted that URL into your web browser. So once you open up that CSV file, you'll basically get the same data. So you get the date and the time in column A. And then in B, you'll get the uh, value from the inverter as well. So slightly easier to work with, but it's up to you what you want to do with the data, really. So that previous one we looked at just now was site power, which returns the site power measurements in 15 minute resolutions. Uh, but we'll just look at a different one now. And that's energy. So site energy is kind of um, similar. Basically, this is the site energy measurements uh, and these measurements appear in the site dashboard already. Instead of quarter of an hour values, you can actually set um, sort of hour, day, week, month, year values on this one. Although don't forget to change. If you were looking at power, go from start time and end time. The parameters are now start date and end date. So this is what the command looks like. So it's very similar again. Obviously, don't forget to put your site ID in here and your API key in here as well. But this time, instead of power, we've got energy here. And as I said before, um, the time unit this time is day, although you can change that to any other kind of value that's listed in the uh, API PDF. And then we've got end date instead of end time, which is date and time. This time, we just don't want the time anymore. We just want the date and the start date and the end date here. So we've run that command in the browser and this is what we get out. So we've got the day, there's a time unit and the inverter. So you can see there 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th gives us our total values from what the inverter got per day. So that's the kind of basics really of the API. It's really important to obviously look at the API PDF and sort of have a look at what um, values are required for the inputs and then see what kind of responses you get back if you want to work with it. But it's pretty easy to use actually, um, a lot easier than some of the other um, inverter companies um, because it's quite easy to get XML and CSV data out of it um, and easy to submit the kind of parameters inside a browser first if you want to just check what you're doing instead of having to write like JavaScript or PHP code, etc. Um, before you sort of see any outputs uh, but that's it really thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed the video if you did give us a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel